Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. E, and today we're going to learn about dividing decimals by whole numbers. But before we dive into the math, I wanted to tell you guys a little story. Once upon a time, there was a decimal named Danny. And any time Danny went to any sort of party or get together, he had to be the life of the party. He was always dancing, acting a fool, getting crazy, and he'd always say, raise the roof, raise the roof. And no matter what party, what get together we were at, Danny would always end up on top of the roof and he would just be partying and just being having such a good time. He was really a party animal and nothing we could do could stop him or kill his vibe. So what does this have anything to do with math? Let me explain. First, we're going to learn a little bit about dividing decimals by whole numbers. We've got an equation here at the bottom, 62 and 52 hundredths divided by 12 equals D for Danny the decimal. Step one, put the dividend inside the garage and the divisor on the outside of the garage. Just a reminder, the dividend's the first number in a division problem, the divisor's the second number, and the quotient is the answer to our division problem. So we're all familiar with this symbol. We've got the dividend on the inside and the divisor on the outside. And no, I see Danny there. How's it going, Danny? All right, step number two, raise the roof. Anytime you have a division problem with decimals, you're gonna raise the roof. So we're gonna draw this arrow. Danny's gonna get up on that roof like he always does, and we're gonna leave him there for a little while. Don't worry, he's gonna be safe. He, he, he never gets hurt when he's up on that roof. Then step three is gonna be create a wick column. So wick columns are making a comeback. So we're gonna use that divisor and multiply all the way up through nine. This does take a little bit of time, but this is really gonna help us while we're dividing, okay? And then step four is divide using the standard algorithm. Now, if you're not super familiar with the standard algorithm, uh, click the link to get some more practice with dividing with the standard algorithm. I have lots of great videos on that and they can help you. It was that McDonald's sells burgers. That was a really good video. Um, but we're going to divide using the standard algorithm. So what we ask ourselves is how many times can 12 fit into 6? And 12 is a bigger number than 6. So we're just going to go ahead and go to the next number. So we're going to ask ourselves how many times does 12 fit into 62? If we look at our what I know column, the number that gets the closest without going over is 60, which we put a 5 on the top. So five times 12 will get us 60. We're gonna subtract to get us two, and then we're gonna bring down the numbers. So the numbers go down, but the decimal always goes up. You don't have to worry about bringing the decimal down because the decimal's a party animal, remember? Danny the decimal, he never goes down. He always goes up, raises the roof, okay? And then we just repeat that process. We ask ourselves, how many times does 12 fit into 25? That fits in twice. Two times 12 will give us 24, and we subtract, we get one, and we bring down the next number. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. Looks like we're gonna get a good answer. So we know that 12 fits into 12 one time. One times 12 equals 12. We subtract that and we get that donut we so desire. It's such a good reward to get the donut at the end. Now, we're not done yet. We still have one more step and that is to check with inverse operations. And we have learned about multiplying with decimals so we can definitely do this step. And now that we know a little bit about dividing decimals, when we multiply, we can use that inverse operation again. So. We check with inverse operations, we multiply the quotient by the divisor, and we should get the dividend, and we did, so it looks like we have a good answer. So dividing decimals is a lot like the standard algorithm. All we've got to remember is to raise the roof. Let's go ahead and practice a couple problems together. All right, I wanted to start off by reminding you guys that these symbols that we see here are just other symbols for division. That backward slash, that means division. And anytime we see a fraction, we should think about division. But just wanted to throw that reminder out there. So our dividend is 74 and 3 hundredths, and our divisor is 11. So we'll put the 74 and 3 hundredths inside the garage and the 11 on the outside of the garage. First step is to raise the roof. And I am going to do my best to remember that. I am bad about remembering this step, so roast me in the comments if I forget it but we're gonna raise the roof first. Get Danny the decimal on the top, okay? Now we're gonna make a what I know column, okay? And this what I know column is gonna be fairly easy because we're just doing the 11s and that's just repeating numbers, not too hard to do, okay? Five, six, seven, eight, and nine, uh, zero, 11, 22, uh, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 58, and 99. Now that we have our width column, we're gonna divide using the standard algorithm. So divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Does McDonald's sell burgers? How many times can 11 fit into seven? It can't, so I'm gonna put a zero up at the top 
And then I'm just going to move on to the next number. I know typically I would subtract zero and keep going, but that's kind of a waste of time. So we're going to go ahead and keep moving. How many times can 11 fit into 74? Well, the closest number we can get to without going over would be six. So we're going to put a six up here on the top. We're going to be subtracting by 66. Uh, we got to borrow one over here. 14 minus six would give us eight. And we can't subtract any further. So now we're going to bring down the next number. Remember, numbers are the only things that can go down. The decimal always goes up. Raise the roof of the decimal, numbers can drop though, okay? Now we ask ourselves, how many times can 11 fit into uh, 80? 11 can fit into 87 times, so that would give us 77. We subtract, we're gonna borrow one from over here, that'll get us three, and then we bring down the next number. Oh yeah, it's all coming together now. 11 can, can fit into 33 three times, we subtract, and we get that donut we ever so desire. But we're not finished yet. We can always check with inverse operations. So 6 and 73 hundredths times 11. This is going to be a really easy one because we're just going to kind of repeat the number that we have. Placeholder 0 because we're high quality students. Kind of copy down this, the next number. When we add those up, it looks like we're going to get a good answer. We're going to scoop two times because there's two numbers behind the decimal. So scoop, scoop. 74 and 3 hundredths, that was the dividend we started with, so we have a good answer. Let's go ahead and move on to the next number. So the dividend in a fraction is the top number, so the top number is going to go on the inside, and the bottom number is going to go on the outside. We're going to remember to raise the roof first. I'm so proud of myself for remembering it on both problems. I typically forget this. You'll see when we do this in class. Okay, and then we ask, or then we got to make sure we make our wick column. Okay, 15's a little tougher to do, but I think we can do this, okay? So it goes all the way up to nine because we're just using our single digit numbers. Don't have to worry about going 10 or above. So we've got zero, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105, 120, and 135. Just a reminder, if you can't do those in your head like I'm doing, it's always a good idea to do repeated addition off to the side because um, sometimes these numbers aren't as easy just to add up in your head. All right, so we ask ourselves, how many times can 15 fit into 5? That's a 0. And then how many times can 15 fit into 52? Looks like 3 is going to be the closest we get without going over. So we're going to put a 45 down here. We subtract, and that's going to give us 7. Bring down the next number. Then we asked ourselves, how many times can we fit 15 into 76 without going over? And that would be five. Ooh, we almost went exactly in that. Okay, that's gonna give us a one. And we're gonna drop the next number, bring it down. Oh yeah, it's all coming together now. 15 can fit into 15 one time. So we put 15 at the bottom, we subtract, and we got the donut again. Ooh, love donuts. Kinda wanna go get one now. We're not finished yet, we do want to check with inverse operations. So we're going to uh, multiply the um, quotient by the divisor to make sure we've got a good answer. So 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 3 is 15 plus 2 is 17. We put a placeholder 0 there, cross out any stray marks, and then it's a 1 there so we can kind of just copy down what we need to do. Then we're going to add them up. 5, 6, 12, and 5. One number behind the decimal, so we're going to just scoop once, scoop, to get 526 and 5 tenths, so it looks like we have a good answer. So, dividing with decimals is a lot like the standard algorithm. All you have to remember is you got to raise the roof, okay? If you can remember to raise the roof at the beginning, dividing with decimals is going to be a breeze. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. I hope that you get some more practice with dividing decimals so you can get a hundo on your next test. We love you guys, we miss you, and I'll see you later, bye. Shout outs to my boy, Danny Love. And a plot twist is, it wasn't just Danny up on the roof, I was right there with him. <laughs>